Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. This morning, Ubiquity released a new Unify Protect application 2.8.28, which has a ton of new features and bug fixes. Just scrolling down, you can see that this list is very, very long. We're not going to go through all of them, but I will show you some changes to the PTZ camera and some other UI changes. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. I do have a Discord server and affiliate links in the description below. So we're going to jump over to a site that I have a PTZ camera because they have now added PTZ tracking. Another thing they added for the AI series of cameras is added detection highlight to live view player for AI camera models. This is both for person and vehicle tracking. So let's take a look. So we're now on to a PTZ camera and this NVR has been updated to the latest protect release. We can see there's quite a few people walking, but we have this new detection highlight. So if we click on that, it's going to ask us what we want to do. Do we want to do person and vehicle? Let's do both. And you can now see that it's highlighting the people as well as the vehicles. I did this about an hour ago and it didn't seem to work quite well, but it seems to be working a little bit better. Okay, so I clicked on the auto tracking button and you can now see that it's following this person and it's going to zoom in and out. It will end up choosing different people from time to time, but it does work relatively well. Another thing that was added to this update right on the dashboard was our camera capacity. And if we hover over it, it will give us a tool tip. So I'm hovering over it. It says that we have HD cameras, we could do 35, 2K cameras, we could do 23, and 4K, we could do 14. Obviously, I don't have that many cameras on my system, so our capacity is pretty low. Under the device list, they've also added this recording mode and it is showing us when it's recording. So all these cameras are recording always and you can see what they're recording in. So 2K, HD or 4K, which is really nice. If we click on one of my cameras, let's just say the Cadio camera, there is also something else that is new and I'm really glad that they added it. So under recording mode, we now have this use global recording settings. So let's go and configure it. You're probably used to the global config settings for our access points because they've had that in Unify Network for quite a while. But right now we could do retention settings, we could do schedule, when to record, which I'm gonna have always, and then we have detections to record. Right now it's only set to motion. I thought I had smart detections because I want those to be recorded. Scrolling down below, you could also have overlay information and then we could do camera exclusions from this global list. I want all my cameras to be in this list, so we're just gonna apply those changes. This makes it a lot easier instead of having to go to each individual camera. I'm really glad they added this feature in. So that's all the changes that I could show on screen, but let's go through some of these improvements. So they've added support for smart detections to trigger a paired floodlight, which is awesome. So if somebody's walking in front of a camera that's paired to the floodlight, the light will go off. I do have a floodlight and I'm gonna test this out. For our G4 Doorbell Pro camera, they've added support for downloading clips from the package camera. And let me show you how we download that package camera. So we're gonna select our G4 Doorbell Pro and then we could click on the download clip. Now we could either download both of the files or we could download one or the other. You could see this is our top camera and this is our bottom camera. So I'm gonna deselect the top camera and then we're just gonna download the package camera. Now that's downloaded, let's bring up the clip. And you can see that it's downloading that package camera, which is awesome. And here's another big update for the stacking. I believe the UNVR, just the four bay, were able to do stacking with that as well as the UNVR Pro. But this is what they've updated. So we added the ability to move cameras between the parent and child NVRs, which a lot of people have been asking for. They've added an NVR column in device list that lists which NVR manages the cameras, which is great. They've improved stackable UNVR initialization setup flow. I still haven't done a video on the stacking of the UNVRs, but I just did order a normal UNVR and we'll be able to do that once it comes in. Now there's just a whole bunch of other bug fixes which we won't go through and I will put this link in the description so that you could read it yourself, but there also is a known issue. So sharing live streams does not work when using a browser on an iOS mobile device. So that's just something to be aware of. And your UNVR needs to be at Unify OS 3.0 or newer. A couple of things that I would like to see, I'd like to see them bring dark mode into our UNVR so that people would change it between dark and light if they'd like. Also under the device list, it would be nice if we could see which switch port that the camera is connected to right from our Protect dashboard. I'm really happy with this update and the PTZ features that was missing since the beginning of when that camera came out. I think a lot more people will now buy this camera. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this update. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.